Now, now let's try to understand uh, like what is the data flow in, in your network and what that data flow looks like. Okay, so again, this is like one sample uh, CNN architecture where we have like uh, different cone layers. We have different activations. We have like a cooling in between. And then finally, we have the fully connected layer, which is giving you predictions. So let's try to understand like how the data flows. Your input is, let's say this image. And then what will happen is in the first convolution layer, you will have some set of uh, set of filters, right? For example, in LXNet, we had 96 different filters. In this case, I'm showing you roughly around uh, 10 different filters. And each of this is like the activation map or like you can say the output of one filter. So when you apply that filter to this image, you get activation map like this. Okay. And again, the second filter, you will get something like this. So all these are output from different filters. And since this, these filters are learned when you train the model, so each filter will be different. Okay. So, and you can see that like, uh, uh, you, you know that when, when, you, when you perform filtering, you're just trying to match that filter with the, with the input image. Right? And if there is a match, you will get high, uh, high activation. And you can see here that like at different, uh, with, with different filters, different positions are actually highly active. Okay, so for example, let's focus on the first one. You can see that like the the bottom of the car, or you can say like some kind of shadow might be there, right? So that filter is actually uh, is is very sensitive to those shadows, and therefore, like uh, at this region, you can see like it's highly active, right? So by the way, the second column over here is after radio activation which means that all the negative values are clipped and you only keep the positive values. Okay, so positive values means which are active. And here you can see that it's kind of uh, getting highly active when you have like the hood of the car, right? which might be very shiny. So it could be the first filter responds to shadows, the second filter responds to like shiny surfaces and so on and so forth. Okay, so you can have a like, lot of lot of those filters and you will have these kind of activations. So each filter is responsible for detecting some kind of uh, characteristic from your input image. And then again, these activation maps will go to the next layer. And again, you will get different set of activations. Okay. And after each cone, you can select when you apply the radio, you are just clipping off the negative values. Pulling operation is nothing. It's just trying to reduce the resolution of your activation maps. As you go down, you can see like uh, what kind of features this uh, this network is trying to uh, uh, trying to recognize. And at the end, what will happen is if if a car is present, then that neuron will be very active, which is kind of a result of like detecting all these patterns, right? So all these patterns actually play a role in making the final decision. Okay, so these are like uh, the activation maps uh, inside inside the network. Now, so that was one uh, one part of your CNN. The other interesting part is like, okay, what will the the kernels look like? Okay, so again, this is a very uh, very very I think uh, interesting question. But again, it's an ongoing research, and people are still trying to figure out like uh, how to control these things and how to how to understand like uh, the, the the learning process in uh, deep learning. So I will give you like a, a brief overview. It's like a, not a recent work. But what it tries to do is it tries to understand like what kind of features are being learned by different layers of the network. And the idea is, let's say this is your input image. The initial layers, the first few layers of the network tries to learn low level features because those filters are directly operating on your input image. And the filter size is usually very small, three cross three or five cross five. In LXNet, it, uh, LXNet it was 11 cross 11, but anyways, that filter actually operates on a very small spatial location. And that's why it's trying to trying to capture like those small, uh, like the low level features. These could be like very simple shapes. These could be like edges, right? So you can see here that uh, these low level features will be, maybe it could be like edges in different directions or very, very primitive shapes. Okay, this is like a kind of a circle. And some of these are also trying to react to like different kinds of colors, right? Now, as you move deeper into your network, then if you, if you try to think about this, then what's happening is you are kind of 
it's utilizing all these low level features right because all these features if they are recognized they will stack up like in the in the volume right they will go as a depth and when you apply that kernel in like intermediate layer that kernel is actually looking at all these activations at once so then whatever decision it's trying to make it's trying to make use of like uh, make use of all the activations which are present at that level which means that at mid level you will try to like combine these and maybe try to learn some complicated uh, shapes okay and as you go deeper again it will be like a combination of those uh, activations so you will try to learn like more complex shapes and here you can see that some of these are like very very uh, no, well known patterns which we observe in our input images okay and finally we use like these activations to determine which object is present in your input image okay so one uh, last question uh, i have for you is like these networks are called uh, convolutional neural networks why don't we call them correlation neural networks because the operation which we are doing it's actually correlation it's not convolution right the the kernels we are not actually trying to flip them and then perform that element wise multiplication we just take those kernels and we just do the correlation operation which is element wise multiplication and then adding those values right and which is fine you can call them correlation but it's just a term so don't worry about that even if you call it correlation neural network i think it will be fine if it won't change anything the interesting thing is it actually doesn't matter because the the core operation between convolution and correlation it's the same as we discussed earlier the only difference is you have to rotate your filters like uh, twice maybe in x direction y direction and then the operation remains the same so rotating the filter it's not a big deal I mean, it's just like we'll have to write extra piece of code so instead of correlation you can also perform convolution operation it's just it won't be efficient just like the the rotation will add like some kind of computation overhead and we don't want that and at the end these filters are learned so the idea is if the network can learn like like filters based on the correlation operation it can also learn the filters based on the convolution operation okay so at the end it, it doesn't matter like whether you call this correlation or convolution 